In the world of property investment in the UK, the choice between using a limited company or operating as an individual or a partnership can significantly impact your tax liabilities and uh, have an impact on your overall business operations. Now, while there are distinct advantages to using, let's say, a limited company structure, uh, there's also drawbacks, uh, and you need to be aware of all of those and consider them before you decide the best and the right structure for you uh, and your family. This video aims to provide an outlook uh, to look at the pros and cons uh, of tax associated with using a limited company for your property business, and also the pros and cons of being a sole trader, but of course you've got LLP, Limited Liability Partnership, and a partnership as well to think about. The tax pros and cons of using a limited company for your business. Uh, so generally speaking, lower corporate tax rates, and this is one of the primary advantages of using a limited company uh, because of the low uh, historic corporation tax rates. Uh, as of now, uh, well, as of 2023, uh, the corporation tax rate in the UK is 19% for companies making under £50,000 profit uh, and then it's tiered uh, and then if you go over to £250,000 you're paying 25% in between there's marginal relief. This is substantially lower than what you'd pay for income tax rates depending on your individual circumstances. Lower tax rates can lead to increased retained profits which is obvious but it's important providing opportunities for reinvestment or expansion. Remember if you have a limited company you're paying corporation tax you may have to pay income tax for any money you take out the person, so you've got two taxes there to think about. So tax deductible expenses. Limited companies often have a broad range of allowable expenses that can be deducted from taxable profits. This can include mortgage interest, payments, property maintenance costs, and other related expenses. Uh, and then if you have any personal related expenses, there's a benefit in kind charge, then you've got to file a P11D2 uh, because the company is a separate legal entity. By using these costs for your property business, uh, you can reduce your taxable income uh, and therefore pay less tax and obviously save tax. But capital gains point of view, limited companies can benefit from capital gains tax uh, to some extent in the sense that you pay corporation tax rates as opposed to capital gains tax rates. Whereas in the, as an individual, you're subject to capital gains tax uh, on the sale of a property, uh, which is 18% for uh, basic rate taxpayers and 28% for higher rate taxpayers when it comes to buy to let. Uh, so that's an, uh, possibly an advantage there in terms of how much uh, capital gains tax you pay with this corporation tax or whether it's capital gains tax as an individual. From an inheritance tax point of view, uh, using a limited company structure can help you uh, reduce some of your tax uh, exposure, both in terms of having, say, growth and freeze the shares and having a trust in place uh, where the shares are owned by a trust and there's other things you can do too uh, like having family members who own part of the company. Now shares can be passed down to beneficiaries uh, which could potentially mitigate your inheritance tax uh, but you need to be aware of uh, the tax you've got to pay when you transfer that property i.e. capital gains tax and possibly stamp duty land tax. Some of the drawbacks of using a limited company is higher administration and compliance costs. Uh, using a limited company involves more complex administration is more hands-on, there's more compliance obligations uh, which inevitably leads to higher costs. This includes filing annual accounts uh, and all of the stuff you have to do in terms of company law, company's house and then everything you do with HMRC and the accounts are more extensive with more detailed notes uh, on your financial statements. And all of these things take time and expertise, therefore it costs you more money. Unlike a sole trader or partnership uh, where owners have more flexibility uh, in structuring their personal income, and there's more freedom to do certain things. Uh, limited company owners may face limitations on extracting profits uh, in terms of the tax charge. Uh, and that can be a limiting factor because you want to be tax efficient and then you've got to pay tax on tax in terms of capital gains tax and income tax. And so dividends are subject to a different tax rates depending on how much money you take. And the inability to, to withdraw funds from a business without a careful tax planning uh, is going to affect you significantly uh, in terms of your personal expenditure and how much money you have. Double tax concerns which I've touched on briefly. Uh, so while corporate tax may be lower than income tax rates and favorable, uh, you've got to look at the double taxation uh, for corporate tax and income tax. And basically what happens is you make profit, you pay corporate tax, uh, then whatever money you've got left over, you take some, some of that as a dividend or a, uh, so you pay income tax or you may take it as a salary and you didn't pay income tax, but if you take it as a salary, uh, then you reduce your capital gains. 
if you take a salary, you then reduce your corporation tax. And of course, like I said, if you, you can make salary payments, which give you corporation tax relief. You can make pension contributions, uh, which will give you corporation tax relief. Uh, but those things need to be carefully managed and need to be right for you and your business. Limited companies do face some restrictions in terms of utilizing losses. Uh, you can uh, offset your losses uh, against future income. You can take your, you can use your losses for the previous year. Losses incurred by a company can be carried forward and offset against future profits, uh, which means you get a delayed benefit in, uh, in terms of the tax relief, but it's still there. So the choice of make using a limited company or not for your property business requires careful considerations uh, and being aware of all your obligations. I've just touched on a few things. It's more extensive than this particular video. And while there are some clear advantages, including lower tax rates, uh, the expenses you can claim, uh, some of the lower uh, capital gain tax in terms of corporation tax paid, uh, you need to think about the administration, the, the company, company law, company's house filing, the reduced flexibility, uh, the double taxation, all that put together and everything else including exit planning needs to be formed part of your overall conversation and then once you've got your, your arms with information you can then decide what works best for you. In terms of having a sole trader business, uh, the administration costs are lower and less complex compared to a limited company. Uh, there's no requirement for example to file uh, accounts uh, with company's house uh, and also when if you're not filing stuff with company's house uh, then you retain a certain amount of privacy if that's important to you then maybe having a sole trader or a partnership might be the right thing for you to do uh, there's also flexibility and ease in terms of profit extraction you make profit you, you work out the tax you pay the tax uh, as a sole trader and the rest of the money is yours you can do what you like with it there's no further tax to pay uh, so unlike limited companies where you've got dividends which are subject to different tax rates uh, sole traders have the freedom to withdraw funds as they need once they've obviously paid the tax uh, although even though you can withdraw the funds before you pay the tax because the tax gets paid uh, by the 31st of January in the following year uh, income tax rates do differ too depending on how much money you take out sole traders can benefit from various tax reliefs and allowances that are available to individuals uh, this will differ from for trading business and differ for investment businesses i.e buy to property uh, owners uh, but you've got your personal allowance uh, which you can use obviously uh, for the taxable income that you have for your salary or your dividends uh, and then if you make a loss uh, you can offset that loss uh, against other income if you have a trading business uh, if it's property business then you obviously carry it forward uh, in the same uh, trade so to speak but although it's not a trade per se uh, if you've got buy business so, but it will help you reduce your lo uh, losses if you, if you are able to claim sideways loss relief. And the ability to use these losses to reduce your overall tax payments is, is valuable because you're claiming it in year, therefore you're reducing your exposure. Now some of the downsides are that uh, you're personally liable for all the debts, so there's no uh, corporate veil, there's no limited liability, so if anything goes wrong, uh, your business and your neck pretty much is on the line. You could possibly lose your house uh, depending on the exposure that you have. Uh, so you should think very carefully about that and prepare your attitude towards risk and all the benefits. Uh, you then decide what's best for you. I know lots of people uh, tend to use a limited company uh, specifically because they want the limited liability. That's not the only reason, but that is a significant part of, of why they want to do something. Uh, why, that's a significant part of why they want a limited company. Sole traders are subject to income tax, uh, which are, are higher than corporate tax rates. They're depending on how much money you take out every, every single year. So you're going to pay more tax. If you take out a, a, a hundred thousand pounds, for example, as a sole trader, uh, compared to a limited company, uh, you'll pay less tax as a, a, a limited company than you would do as a sole trader. There are certain reliefs available to limited companies that aren't available to uh, sole tr traders. Uh, for example, investors relief uh, being one of them. There are many others, by the way. Now, there's no point in me covering those on this particular video because I'm just trying to bring to your attention how the whole system works. Uh, so just be aware of those things and if there is a particular relief that you want to claim uh, then you need to be aware of that uh, research and development same thing available to limited companies not available to individuals uh, so make sure you're aware of those things before you choose your particular structure so unlike limited companies which can attract external funding uh, through issuing shares sole traders uh, will face more challenges generally speaking sole traders tend to be smaller businesses uh, so if one wants to become a sizable business, 
Uh, there's an expectation to some extent, by the way, to have a formal structure which tends to be a limited company. And of course, uh, you can then give people to sell shares, uh, give them shares or uh, attract investment. You have separate SPVs, special purpose vehicles uh, to do that too. So uh, having a limited company structure gives you that particular flexibility. So you can see there's a lot to think about here in terms of tax, administration, liability, uh, access or funding, different tax reliefs, allowances uh, and exemptions. So you should think about all of those and, and look at the pros and cons and think about your attitude towards risk. You think about the debts and the liabilities that, uh, that you're taking on uh, and think about your future planning, legacy planning, exit planning and think about all of that uh, in line with the risk tolerance that you have and your growth objectives for your property business, be it uh, a trade or an investment depending on what you do and then decide what works best for you and as always so please remember never let the tax tail wag the dog the tax is an important part of your business okay but there are other decisions uh, and implications you need to be aware of before you decide what's right for you don't let tax be the main driving factor it should be a consideration not the consideration uh, in most scenarios hope you enjoyed that video if you find it useful click like don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you updated. Any questions or comments in the box below, I'll answer them all personally.